Hello. I hope we're all ready and here and everything. What's up, everyone? <laughs> uh, I'm here with my good friend and animator, Rush Light Invader. It says Rush is muted, though. So I guess he just has to wave. <laughs> well, hello, good. everyone. Hello. Then Rush is back. What's I'm up? back. What's up? We're, thanks thanks for coming on, Rush. What are we hey, talking about today? I think we're talking about art or something, moving pictures. Um, something like that. We, yeah, something like that. VidCons asked us to talk about the guide to producing animated YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. Do you do you do any of that, Rush? I think, I think no. Any of no, that? No? no. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, I animate. Well. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good because uh, this is such a broad topic and there's so much that needs to be discussed mm -hmm. when, you know, you're making these videos because they're really big projects. Mm -hmm. So I made a PowerPoint presentation. Oh boy. Or, Here we go. <laughs> um, if I go here and uh -huh. I swap and then let's see if this works. If I share screens and I I'll share make fun of you if it doesn't, don't you worry. That's a, that's fine. You, you, you're allowed to make fun of me. Yeah. I'm here for you, man. Oh, is this working? I, I can see it. Let's move my screen. Giant. That would be that would be very bad if uh, you know we they can't see this. That'd be hilarious. Um, <laughs> so the here's welcome to the odd ones out guide to producing YouTube videos. Oh. Wait a minute, we want to make animated YouTube videos. What do you do? Ooh, you add a little <laughs> bounce effects. Uh huh. That's that was uh I I animated it. Oh, oh wow. and good. then featuring Rush Light oh. Invader. Oh. And look, whoa, there's, whoa. there's your little icon. That's right, a crazy animation, the... bro. That's really good. <laughs> yeah. You should get yeah, a so good animator. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, as I'm giving this presentation, use the hashtag VC now, the odd ones out guide. It's a very long hashtag. I'll, I'll give you a moment to write it down, to ask questions. Uh, and we'll, we'll be answering some questions at the end of this presentation. Uh, before we begin, I want to give a little introduction to who is Rush? What, what, who, who are you, Rush? Like, this is, these are some of the things that Rush has animated for my videos. Uh, I'll give him the storyboard or I'll tell him like, hey, I need a Cthulhu like holding out a Zodiac wheel and then Rush will animate it. Yeah, or, take me a few hours, maybe a minute or two. You know how easy mm -hmm. animation is, you know. Mm -hmm. What's, uh, what's, what's really funny, the, uh, this one right here, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but the eating floof one, this was Rush's idea. Like uh, Rush pitched this joke, and I was like, "That's a good idea. That's a good joke, Rush." Now you're gonna have to animate it. So <laughs> and I was like, "Ah, oh, not suggested. Yeah. Not more work for me." <laughs> yeah, and so uh, Rush, you've been working for me for about what two years, or is it three? Two, two, two and a half, maybe. Yeah, mm -hmm. so yeah, long, so, too long. Yeah, thank. You. So everyone, thank Rush for making these really cool frame by frame videos. So here are all the rules for making animated YouTube videos. There are no rules. You can make animations any way you want. You can get a little book and on paper and you just, just make a flip book. You can get clay and take pictures every second. You can get this little wheel thing. It starts with a Z. It's called like a Zyotrope Zebra. or something. That's not it. Uh, <laughs> make it spin. You can draw like this. You can use pivots. You can draw your animations on cells and take pictures and have it move. So really there, there's no rules. For making animations thank you all for watching this video wow be sure good. to hit that just kidding fake out this is if you want a more detailed uh guide here is how here are the rules for making an odd ones out youtube video this is how i do things once again i just wanted to say like there are no rules every everything i do this is just what i prefer but like i said you can do whatever you want and it will still turn out good Right, Rush? Sounds about right. Sounds about right. Yeah. You get a little stick figure. You can do anything. Yeah, like me and Rush have like different animation styles and we use different equipment. Speaking of equipment, here's some, so here's some tablets that I have used or have heard good things about. Uh, the, I think both me and Rush, we both started out, uh, I think, actually, can I? Whoa. Whoa. You drawing on that? Yeah, I can. Next level. <laughs> I, I shouldn't do that because I'm going to get distracted. Uh, so this this Bamboo Create, it's about $100. It's it's one of those tablets that 
you just draw on a piece of plastic and then it shows up on screen. Yeah, it's very uh, hard to get used to at first, that's for sure. It is very hard to get used to. I was thinking about it. And I remember when I was first starting out, uh, my very first tablet was a Bamboo Create. I would draw on paper and then scan it in or take a picture on my phone and then really? put it in the drawing program and then like trace over it just because it's so hard to like draw like on a desk and then watch it get drawn on this. It's very, does take a long time to get used to. Which I so I think me and you both prefer these screen tablets where yeah, you draw yeah. right on the tablet itself. Um, the Wait. the Wacom Cintiq is a very it's it I people I've heard I've heard people describe it as the Apple of the of the drawing tablet world where yeah. they're very good products but they're a little expensive. The Wacom Cin the thirteen inch one which is about the same size as this is like six hundred and fifty dollars and then the uh, twenty two inch one was like two thousand dollars. Uh, Rush, what Cintiq do you have? Right now, I have a, a yeah. ginormous boy, the 26 mm -hmm. HD. Too big. It fills up my whole desk. No room for my mouth. Yeah. I had to get a bigger desk just to get... <laughs> don't invest too big. So, bigger does not mean better. Yeah, so ex exactly. Exactly. Like, so you don't need the biggest and best tablet to make professional level art. You can create professional level art with the Bamboo Create. Wait, James. Um, mm -hmm. I know a kid. His name is Party Dave. He's like 15, right? He animates on his phone. He just, and it's like a free, like a program. He just animates yeah. on his phone. It's so fluid. I get mad at him. So how young he mm -hmm. is. I, I, I'm not, so I would say, I would say, honestly, these, the tablets that you have is more for the convenience, you know, like, yeah. I think for us, it's faster to draw on these screen tablets. Um, there's, I've heard good things about Huey on, uh, for a while, I used this tablet called a Yanova, which mm -hmm. it, like compared to this antique, it's way cheaper and it's, it's like it has like a glass top. Um, I would say look at like uh, tablet reviews before you buy. Yeah. Um, actually, if you're just starting out, get a cheap tablet first just to see if this is what you want to do, if this is something you like doing, because you don't want to invest $2,000 into a drawing tablet and then not end up liking it. Yep. Yeah. So me and Rush both started out with the thing. Uh, microphones. So videos are both visual and audio so the audio is just as important as the visuals and you want to have a microphone that is good for uh for voiceovers right so the microphone i'm using right now to talk to people is this blue yeti right here that's the that's a it's about a hundred dollars there's the blue snowball those are usb microphones so they can just plug right into the computer and you just start recording mm -hmm. uh rush you are using a Shure SM7B microphone right now. Yeah, you either get like the extra cables and stuff. It's a little like uh, mm -hmm. high end, but it's, it's like it's like still good quality. But even the yeah, snowballs that, and stuff are still like good. It's just not as good. the 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 Shure is what I, uh, the the Shure SM7B that is what I'm using. It's just in my sound booth right now. The the Blue Yeti is just what I use for Skype calls and and Discord calls. I don't know why did I say Skype calls? No one uses Skype. <laughs> I've used Skype for years. <laughs> I know. Um, but yeah, the, the this is a, this is called an XLR microphone. It's a condenser microphone. It's good for voiceovers. Uh, it's so interesting. Once I learned about this microphone, I started I started seeing it everywhere. Like a lot of podcasts use them. So, uh, but once again, this is just a YouTube video. So you don't need the highest fancy equipment for 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 everything. Um, so you can get pop filters and sound foam that can reduce the echo or getting even getting a sound booth. So like where you record the audio is important. Um, so a lot of people, if, if you don't have the pop filters or the foam, you can just record in your closet. You can set up, uh, what, what are those, the little bed? Pop filters? Yeah, uh, this, this is something that I learned. You can take a, like a nylon sock and stretch it over a hanger and you just got a makeshift, makeshift pop filter for no money. You can and also like take covers and just flop it over your desk, like your screen yeah. and just use that as like exactly. inflation. Yeah, so when you're just starting out, you kind of have to make do with what you have. You know, you have to like get creative and it's a YouTube video. As long as the audio doesn't sound completely terrible, people are still gonna watch it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and here's some programs that I have for audio editing. There's Audacity and Audition. Audacity is free, which is uh, what, why a lot of YouTubers use it. Um, and then Levelator is another program that will uh, level out your the audio. So great, great program. The, when, yeah, when you're whispering, it makes that louder. And when you're screaming, it makes that quieter so that it's all just 
a just a nice clean level audio throughout the whole video and then video editing programs uh, there's premiere after effects sony vegas and then uh, camtasia i just put in just so it's uh just, just so it was symmetrical. I've used Camtasia before, but I wouldn't recommend it, honestly. It's it's just some other program. Just, and then just to look nice. Movie, yeah, just to look nice. Uh, honestly, I would say if, you, if you're a student, you can get Adobe products for free, I'm pretty sure. I need to look into that, but you know. Uh, then there's drawing programs. There is a whole bunch of drawing programs to choose from. Once again, there's so many different ways you can go about making these videos. Uh, there's Paint to Sai, Photoshop, there's, there's just a lot. <laughs> um, and then there's a, a rush you use Flash. A lot oh. of animators use Flash to oh, yeah, animate it's, on. It's a big old pain in the neck, that Flash. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then there's also Toon Boom, which other YouTubers have heard. Uh, TV Paint, I've, I haven't ever used it, but I've seen other people use it. What, what program's just, paper? What's that? What program is that? Yeah, uh, what program is that, man? You can like this is this is called paper where like it it looks like this. No way. And, uh, doesn't it's very cheap actually. Paper is so. Uh, it is it the quality is pretty good too. It like almost looks real. Uh, this is optional equipment. This is just some stuff for you. <laughs> you don't need this. So you know uh, this the smudge guard. This helps when you're drawing across the screen. Uh, a spine that helps. Uh, what else? Healing crystals. Oh, the, the Goku statue. I Black got Jesus. that. Yeah, you got a Goku statue. I got, a, I got one of those. <laughs> and the, the seal, the seal, plot, the seal pillow. There it is. Yeah, man. Uh, so, once again, this is just optional equipment. You don't need all of this, but you know, it helps. <laughs> uh, so once you have all the equipment to make the video, uh, you need to start thinking about like what you're going to make a video about. So for the, the first step is to get an idea. And a, a good way that I think of ideas is I think about what's something I can talk about for hours. You know, when you're talking with your friends and you, you just go off about certain different topics, like think about what you can talk about and rant about for hours. Um, so the, uh, you start out by like thinking of like umbrella topics, like what you did in quarantine, what do you like to do for, for why do you like the things you like, shows you, it's just get an idea first and then start writing. Uh, then writing a script. Here is one of my scripts on the right left. And then uh, well, this is one of Jordan's scripts on the right. Uh, there's a new video tomorrow. Ooh. Uh, and uh, this, is, this is the script uh, for the video that's coming out tomorrow where it, it, starts out with, uh, it starts out with a Joe Exotic parody. You just call my name's Joe Exotic. I exploit dangerous wild animals for profit. Uh, so this is just an example of a script that, I, that we do. Um, then this is another important step is to get others to read the scripts and give notes. Mm -hmm. So here's some scripts where uh, I, I said like, uh, oh, he also told me that uh, every illness is in your head and that hospitals can cure anything, but they're not going to because they, uh, if they cure you, they're going to lose a customer. So they're just going to stick to their non or his essential oils and uh, <laughs> stick to his non-vaccinated immune system and essential oils. Thank <laughs> you very much. That was what was in the original video. Um, and then uh, my friend Moz was like, this is true. And then Jaden said, what about death? And Moz said, did I stutter? <laughs> um, and then this is another line in the video that's going to come out tomorrow where I'm like, I know reality TV is fake. And who knows if this entire relationship was scripted and manufactured for the show. But I don't care if it's fake. This smile is real. And then Rush suggested to zoom in on my face and it's gross up with bags under your eyes and a five o'clock shadow. And I said, that's good. That's a good <laughs> that's idea, Rush. Right <laughs> wow. Very <laughs> right. This was, this was your script, Rush. Do you want to read it or, or no? <laughs> uh, it's basically in the game, I talk about the, you create your character any way you want. And then James was like, show him in a bikini. We've got to see him. We've got to see Master Chief in a bikini. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> all right, I'll think about it. Uh, yeah, and then, yeah, I'll think about it. That's a good way of saying not every note will make it into the video. <laughs> Wait a minute. Are you not <laughs> That's my suggestion. I, <laughs> this was in the, uh, what one was it? It was in the scams or no, the, crazy people video where I was like another piece of evidence I was talking about the Sonic movie and how I was like another piece of evidence is look at this what is this there's no way that any executive or someone with two eyeballs would okay this ever and then Rush suggested <laughs> so the guy in the distance I'd okay man I'm kind of turned on like, stop <laughs> so you know not every note but like it is important to get others to read your scripts get opinions think about like have them tell you what you can make clearer what you can do to like punch jokes and everything. 
Uh, so that's so once you get the script going, remember that a good script is not necessarily an exciting, edge of your seat, nail biting story. A good script is an entertaining script. My second most popular video is when I was talking about working at Subway. So it's it doesn't have to be getting kidnapped every time. It doesn't have to be life or death. The script just needs to be entertaining. Right, Rush? No, it has to be boring. I love boring videos. It, they put me to sleep. I love sleeping is hard for me. I really just want to. That's true. Yeah. Just make ASMR videos. <laughs> yeah. um, this was a fun little thing, and hopefully the audio is working with this. Uh, because here is when you record the audio, this is the line that I have. And you might think that it's a very easy line to do. Just this was the final audio. Hopefully, the At my Subway, you would spend your entire five to six hour work shift with only one other person. And you didn't get to pick that peculiar partner you were spending your precious period with. So that meant I was stuck with some crazy characters. So you think that is a very easy line to do, but this is what, when I'm recording videos, at least, this is what it sounds like in the booth. Woo, woo, There's, woo! That was me checking to make sure the microphone was on, close the door. At my Subway, you would spend your entire five to six hour work shift with only one other person. That was a good and you take. didn't get to pick the person you would spend that pre. And you didn't get to pick the person you would spend that precious. And you didn't get to pick that. <laughs> I'm good at this game. And you didn't get to pick the partner you would be. Yeah, this is, and you didn't get to pick the precarious it, partner you were spending that precious par period with. How long does it take you to record audio, Rush? Well, sometimes it's like a day. Depends on how if I go bad up with line, I just go back and, and read the line or something. Right? Your partner you'd be spending that precious period with. I think there's a part where I have a breakdown in the hair. <laughs> and you <laughs> didn't. <clears throat> and you didn't get to. Yeah. And you didn't that happens. I just do like the SpongeBob meme. I mimic. And you didn't yeah. get to pick that peculiar partner you were spending that precious time with. And you didn't and you didn't get to pick that peculiar partner you were spending your precious period with. Yeah, so recording audio, I like to do multiple takes with different inflections. A lot of times when I'm recording audio, I'll just mess up on the line and not to restart it. So that's that's how I do it. Everything good? Cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. To a way you would spend uh, your at my uh, 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 And once you get the uh, just, uh, once you get the audio all recorded and edited, next step is to send it off to your storyboarders. This is just how I do it. <laughs> you, if you don't have storyboarders, it's fine. So here are my two storyboarders. There's uh, Ed, who's uh, Funny Money, and then Alice, who's Hexerin on Twitter. They are both uh, really good storyboarders. Uh, here is an example of Ed's storyboards. So one of my guilty pleasures is that while I'm working, I will listen to crazy people talk for hours. It's weirdly my version of ASMR. I've tried listening to podcasts and audiobooks or anything that's good for my brain, but there's something so fascinating about listening to a 50 year old genuinely tell you about his alien abduction. And it only has 300 views? This man was contacted by aliens, people. Why isn't he on the cover of Time magazine? Uh, yeah, oh, that that was the next frame. But that that was an example of what Ed storyboarded. Uh, mm. Here is an example One of, my of something that Rush storyboarded. Uh, at least we are <laughs> Beautiful. So I guess, oh, that's the next frame of the video. Um, I guess a storyboard is sort of the sketch of the animation. You know how when you're drawing, how you sketch first and then like make the final lines second. So the, the storyboard is just getting your idea out on, on the computer just so you other people can see like, all right, this is what's going to be happening in the shot. This is what's going to be there. Uh, the storyboard also helps you like work on the timing. It helps you if you need to like, you know, move move things around or or figure out just just to get the idea on paper you don't just start animating by like by going from like the very beginning of this the scene to the very end of the scene you have to like plan everything out yeah. like what the characters are going to do like every hand move every every eye blinking except you know we don't i don't think we do eye blinking but uh it, everything has to be planned out and Wait, this game 
James, bring up a point. When when you animate the way you were saying, like going by frame by frame, it's sometimes if you animate a storyboard like that, you the character mm-hmm. reference sheet will like they'll shrink or grow like like certain like aspects of the character mm-hmm. would like warp as it goes. Yeah, yeah. So if you if you just do it's called straight ahead or is that what it's called? Just when you animate without a storyboard where you just just start the animation then just maybe. go from the, to the end of the scene. It, it, maybe it, it, your 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 character design will get messed up like you'll accidentally like draw the head like a different size so making just getting the sketch out and planning everything out before you start the animation is important so when you when the storyboards are done you have a you have a basic basically have like a sketch of what you need to do when the storyboards are done so for this it's like all right i need a pose of james laying like this i need all of the, uh, all of these like technology stuff <laughs> i need all of these pieces of technology like drawn out i need a background for the like the floor so then using all the drawing programs that i mentioned i draw out all the things uh can get the background artist or, or when you have this you can just send it off to the background artist to be like all right we need a background of this um and then then once you get all the assets made you can either put into a what i do since i don't really do frame by frame that much i just put it in a in premiere uh, if you want to do more frame by frame stuff, I recommend Flash or Toon Boom. Uh, and so that, there, there it is. You just make the assets and then you can put them all together into the, the final image. And that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> and uh, if possible, be smart with backgrounds. Uh, so as you can see in Ed's storyboard, I, I have this folder called, uh, I have all my assets saved. So we already have this like messy desk and this background, we've already done that before. So Ed used those assets and that background in his board. Uh, I ended up using a different desk asset and a different room background because it just, I, the main focus was James on the computer, not like this messy desk. Uh, and the perspective is off, you know, the perspective when, when in the final image it doesn't really make much sense, but it's a YouTube video. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. like I said, the, the focus of this scene was James closing the curtains and going onto, the, going onto his computer. Um, so that, uh, that's why I reuse backgrounds. Um, actually, why, why do we reuse backgrounds, Rush? Why, bro? <laughs> why do we do that? I need to know because right now. Because... Drawings equal time plus money. So this background, this was done by one of my background artists named Annie. Uh, this is her Twitter at. Uh, this background took seven hours to make. <laughs> so beautiful. It, was, it is very beautiful, but spending seven hours on a background is is very. It, it's time consuming. It takes money. It's it's a lot. So. Which is why, oh, and this is what the background was used for. This is, get ready for this. This is what. <laughs> if it wasn't for the Cats movie, I would have thought Hollywood knew what they were doing too. That was it. If that it was wasn't, well worth it. That was well yeah, worth it. It was a seven hour background for four seconds of content. Uh, this, is, this is an extreme example. Not all backgrounds are this complicated or, or take that long. But now that we have this nighttime city background, we can reuse the backgrounds in other backgrounds. Mm. And you hopefully didn't notice. Uh, and something that I just started doing, this was in like, I, I, it's embarrassing to admit, but like I only started doing this in 2020, but uh, I make the backgrounds at a higher quality than I need them to be. So like this, this background was done in 4K. My videos are in 1080p, which is 1920 by 1080. Uh, this background was done in 4K. And the reason for that is so that way I can zoom up on the background or uh, yeah, that's pretty much just zoom up in the background and not lose the quality. Like, let's say I want to have a character like near a, a dumpster, I can just plop them down like right here. But since if this, if this background was in 1080, then I would have to zoom up and it would be a lower quality. So always make your backgrounds and even your assets too, just at a higher quality. So you can, uh, you, you have more mobility with them. Uh, if it was use for them uh, and like I said this is that's where you're using the background but remember this is how the odd ones out does backgrounds you don't have to do backgrounds like oh, me no. oh, this no. is how Rushlight Invader does backgrounds <laughs> all right yeah <laughs> whoa look at that perspective so good yeah we want to talk about perspective being off let's <laughs> let's talk about this listen uh, man 
All Walk right. me through these backgrounds. All right, so I'm a one man army. All right, I gotta do. I don't have that many. I'm, I recently tried to get some help for my background, but originally, I, I suck at background. So I was like, I protect this off. I'm gonna slap some color left and right, make it pop, make it crazy, and line art. I don't know. State color outside the lines, basically. You know what I mean? Just go crazy. That's the thing is that backgrounds. This is kind of sad, but like backgrounds aren't the focus of this of the shot. They're supposed to be in the, they're just supposed to place your character like in a location, unless it's an establishing shot and it's like, this is where the background, then that's like the focus. But for, for like this, this is where the backgrounds were in the actual video. The focus was not like the sidewalk and this building over here. This is just supposed to show that they're in a, they're in a city and they're looking at this restaurant or they're yeah. in that. And so like, once again, you know, your backgrounds are just, <laughs> they're in the back <laughs> um, and you know, Sometimes you don't even need backgrounds. That's, this is just like how we do things. This is just how we make our videos. Um, one thing that I think we both do is that we have colored line art for our backgrounds. Yeah. Like this, like we, we don't use uh, black lines for our backgrounds because we want to save that for the foreground for like what's supposed to pop. So the not having colored line art or having colored line art in backgrounds makes it look nicer and makes it like not as pop, not pop as much, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, there's, yeah. and you, you just go crazy with the textures. I just go but, crazy, man. Just dots everywhere. Yeah. More dots, the better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we both do backgrounds very differently and people watching might do backgrounds differently than us. Once again, there's no rules. You can do whatever you think looks the nicest. And here is step seven learn how the programs work. We weren't numbering the steps, but uh, this is just, this is an important step that you wanna make sure you're not doing things the wrong way. So uh, there's a bunch of information on YouTube. Uh, there's tutorials, there's, there's, uh, there's also drawing tablet reviews. So there's loads of information made by smarter people. Oh, yeah. there's, <laughs> don't watch us. <laughs> so, just do do research. This probably should have been like step one, should have, not step seven. Uh, so um, this this video by Alan Becker, uh, he talks about the twelve principles of animation. They're really awesome. This video is so good. When I, I, I said when VidCon asked me to to do this this panel, I was just going to play this video and just force everyone to watch it. <laughs> um, so shout out to Alan Becker's twelve principles of animation. That's really good. It is a great video. Um, and, you know, there's, once again, there's a lot of information and tutorials on YouTube. So if you're unsure of anything, watch tutorials. And then things to remember. Animation takes a really long time. So use a simple character design because you have to redraw it a lot. Uh, be unique. Think about how you're going to stand out and what makes you stand, like what separates you from all the others. Mm -hmm. um, th another thing to remember is that people don't care that if you spend seven hours to make a background. They just want to be entertained. I just, I just spend seven hours on backgrounds because I think they look nice. Uh, another important thing to do is to have fun and also to go outside from time to time. It's very easy for us animators to just stay inside behind the drawing tablet and just, just not leave and not talk to anyone. But that, that is a very damaging mindset and an unhealthy lifestyle. So go outside <laughs> pretty much. Um, and that was the, pretty much the end. Any questions? Yeah. Do I have to go outside or, um, wear a mask if you, if you need to go outside, oh, actually, good. Good probably should have mentioned that. Yeah. I should have, I should have added, I should have added wear a mask if you need to go outside. Okay, cool. Cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so yeah, j just to recap, get the equipment by doing research for what you need. Uh, mm -hmm. I recommend getting a drawing tablet, but it turns out some people can just draw on their phone. So yeah, dude, they're, they're great. whatever, I guess. <laughs> um, uh, oh, I, I should have mentioned this for, for recording audio. I've also heard other people record on their phones too. They don't even use microphones. Um, where you record is very important. You know, you don't want to, and, and this, this is my office. And so I haven't like soundproofed it at all. So it's probably very echoey, um, but recording in your closet, you don't want a lot of background noise. Um, next thing is you want to learn how your programs work. So watch tutorials draw every day draw for fun doesn't matter and before you know it you'll have made a youtube video is that how it works? <laughs> i'll take it you know what yeah pretty much
Oh, write, writing a script is important too. That's people ask me like, James, do you like ever make a video and then decide, oh, I don't like it and then delete it. And I go, I do that in the script writing process. Once, once the script is done and I record it, that's then I'm making the video, you know, because these take a long time. There's no way I'm spending a month on working on something and then not posting it. Yeah. So the, I, I have written scripts where I'm just not happy with them, where I go like, mm, I don't really, uh, and I like end up not using that. So yeah. the, the, the script is where I think the, since these videos are so story driven, the script is a very important part. hundred percent. There's some animators that like, don't like their, their scripts are amazing, but they don't move their characters as much. And it's still like the most entertaining thing yeah. I've ever watched. And once again, this is just how I do videos. There's, I've, uh, there's people that just do improv or they just create bullet points of what they want to talk about and then just hit record. Um, uh, I, oh, that, that's another thing is that to, and when you're in the sound booth or when you're recording audio, just try and ad lib, try and improv stuff, have fun with it. Because if, if it's not funny, then you don't add it in. Uh, there were, there, there have been lines that have made it into the video that have been improv. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's shading get to some questions. Okay, shading is the worst. Don't do shading, uh, never. Don't do flat. That's another thing. Like, if your characters move, that's another thing that you also have to keep track of moving, okay? Because if you just have flat colors and you have your character just move their arm, you, you don't have to think about the shading. You just put their arm, you just color their arm one color and then move their arm. But since it's shading, it's like, all right, make sure this is shaded. Yeah. That is shaded. You can have more time animating, make your characters more interesting, moving, and more entertaining than yeah. just making yeah, it so look the, good. The simpler the character design, the more time you have to make it animate. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, so let's get to the questions. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. Vaporonic Vaporonic Seventeen says, "How do you coordinate with your team?" This is actually uh, that's a good question because when I first started working with other people, I I did not understand like how to work with other people. Um, I use Google Sheets and Google Drive to like share files to people. Uh, Google Sheet is that, that I like make a spreadsheet of like what needs to get done, who's doing it. Um, that, that's pretty much it. And, and people have to claim th things as well. Mm -hmm. And when when you're working with people, you want to discuss payment like as like the that's like the first thing you want to discuss because you know you'd be like hey work for me i won't tell you how much i'm paying you so you know the, that's being being open about that is important um when i first started i used to pay people whenever the video was done mm -hmm. i would just like i'd post the video and then i'd like be like all right how much do i owe everyone but now i've i've <laughs> that didn't become consistent and people didn't know like when their next paycheck was so i started paying people just uh twice a month so every other week and now it's more consistent so that's that is i think a uh, better better to do than just paying after the video yeah, um, yeah. uh and then yeah so that's just how you work with other people it's it's it it it's <laughs> there, it's it's tougher than you think. That's yeah. what I would say. Some, some, so if you're hiring other artists, you, they have to adapt to your art style as well. Yeah. It's harder it's harder than to get used to after like, and then they'll get used to it. Mm -hmm. and like, ah. That's true. Like, uh, like with, when I first brought on Rush, Rush can probably tell you this. He probably exposed me. I would give Rush a lot of notes, like a bunch of times. Like it's okay. Yeah. It's, a, and, it's normal. It's normal. It's yeah. You good. give a lot of notes, but now we're at a point where like Rush can just go on. Like he can just, I just give him something. And I know Rush will like, nail it every single time because he knows how I like things. Yeah. Um, Magma Ambler one says, will you ever remake your first video? Um, what was my, oh, my first video was of the book I made as a kid. I probably won't. If I did, the only way I would remake it is if I was talking about something else. And then that, that, that book that I made like was relevant to what I was talking about. I would be like, so, like books are fun my very first video is about when i made a book in fourth grade mm -hmm. it's a very bad video and you shouldn't watch it but basically the gist of that video was and then that's what i would do but i wouldn't just remake i wouldn't just take the script and be like just remake it would you ever remake your first video rush no i'm not <laughs> going back and touching that thing no way jose mm -hmm. uh ian profile says how you learn to animate things like perspective, dynamic poses, and really fast scenes. References. 
reference. Oh, I was going to say practice. Oh, I was like, <laughs> what? That's a, that's a, that's a that, that is good. Practice and references. Um, you, you know, like how, how, how did you learn? I, I still don't know how to do perspective. What are you, why are you asking me? <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, like that, that, that is a, that is true. If you see something in a anime or a cartoon, like if you see like one punch man doing a big punch, you can be like, Ooh, I want to make my character look like that. And then you would reference that punch and figure out how it worked and no, what the, it, what the animators did to you know, make it pop. You know what I used to do, James? You used to trace what? I used to trace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. So that is like a technique I had when I was a kid, right? Is tracing bad? Well, if you claim it as your own and or yeah. like make like, yeah, it's like you can't just be like, this is mine. You used to be like out state. It's like, oh, I took inspiration or whatever. But mm-hmm. like when I was a kid, I would like Goku, I would like trace him and then I'll and then I'll like copy it, I'll reference it and then I'll do it off my head. Like it's an exercise. Mm-hmm. I was just like, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an exercise. That's part of the practice is to yeah. like learn, like, you know, like when you see art you like, you have to figure out like, OK, how, why does this work? How does it how, how did the artist do what they do? Mm-hmm. Um, so like, it, it's important to push yourself, uh, always be trying to improve and reference. <laughs> for, for animation, if we're talking about this, you know your uh, music video? Yeah. You know how the part where he rolls down the hill? I took inspiration mm-hmm. from the slime video, Woof, where the oh, camera, yeah. the girl rolls down the hill and she goes away from the camera. I take that same like animation, that same like mm-hmm. act. That idea thing. that rolling down a hill. And yeah, then... but I make him roll towards the camera. So it's like the same motion, but a different perspective. Like I like, pivoted the camera at 45 degrees, mm-hmm. basically. There so was, like, um, just make it out as you go. There were, I totally forgot what this was for, but there was this video of a raccoon like rolling like over its head. So it was like this raccoon just like rolling over its head. Mm-hmm. And this other animator named Keke Flipnote like oh, animated man. the raccoon just like as a ball, just like rolling. And then I think it was like a, a, one of my characters, I like told Rush, I was like, ooh, I want to have my character rolling like over its head and up up like that. I want it and like being animated similar to Keke's. Do you remember that? Was it the Rush? junk food video? Like a fat kid, do you mind me to do? <laughs> I think so, yeah. Like he was just so round that he just like rolled over um so that's yeah but like you didn't trace that did you no yeah we we were just like oh that's a funny that's a funny funny pose that happens so we're gonna (laughs) we're gonna use that (laughs) um animation ninja says how long it take you to animate and editing i think they're asking how long it takes us to animate and edit depends Uh, on what it is it could be like you've you've seen you've seen our upload schedule so (laughs) 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 <laughs> no it's four months it's a, for me oh no well you're busy working you're busy yeah. making my videos so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no it's it it takes a long time there's a lot of planning there they are big projects that require a team of people uh well they don't require a team of people like we both started out with uh you know uh, being ourselves yeah. um xxkkccxx says what's your favorite video that you've made uh Hmm. Usually my most recent one, the one that I'm posting tomorrow, woo, plug, uh, that, I'm pretty proud of that one. So, you know, I'm just going to say the title of it. It's the title I want to call it is My Decaying Mind in Quarantine. So. Did you decay? What happened? You all right? Well, it's just, it's, I'm just talking about what I've done in quarantine. Oh, okay. okay. Which once again, is not a edge of your seat nail biting story. It's just like, this is how I... Yeah. That's how my this is how I'm suffering alone. <laughs> this is a question that I don't think I can answer, but you can. Uh, how much animation is too much animation? How oh. to balance effort and quality? Oh man. <laughs> I used to believe that if my stories had the best animation and the best shading, it would be the best. And then I'm like, no, it's majority script, majority entertainment. There's no way. Like I stop focusing too much animation. Like there's sometimes too much. Like if you're just worried about this float fluidity of an I guess arm movement it's like you have to figure out like where you draw the line yeah. you know like like i don't lip sync to save time yeah, and i can post but then but then i'm spending seven hours on a background so <laughs> um so you, you kind of have to figure out like what you want you know and like you don't you can take a year and make a three minute animation mm-hmm. and have it look like disney level animation like you you can do that but 
once again, what Rush said, no one, people just want to be entertained on YouTube. Yeah. They're, if, if it's not entertaining, they're not going to rewatch it and share it. Um, it's, like, it's also like a personal struggle too. It's like, if you make something it's like, oh, it's not my best of my ability, but I need to post this. And then mm -hmm. but you're like, ah, it's yeah, like that's a struggle. A, that is a, a struggle. Like as YouTubers, we need to post from time to time. So we have to figure out like, all right, where, what corners do we cut <laughs> yeah. to get uh, the video out on time? That's why um, we do for bounce frames or anticipation and um, overextension. Like you use like mm -hmm. the bounce. We just take the same image and bounce them forward and back and forth once in a while, right? That, that being said, it is important that you like the videos that you're posting. You know, like be, be proud of the videos that you make. Don't just rush something out just to post it. Haha, <laughs> pun. But um, like you need, a, you need to enjoy the videos that you make because if you don't enjoy it, then people are going to sense that and they're not going to enjoy it either. Um, uh, here's another question. This is, I think, Rush can answer. Uh, if your team of artists make make a mistake, do you bother them to fix it or do you do it yourself? Oh, we fix them? Uh, question mark. Well, I, that's actually good because you only you only see the times that I bother you about it. There are times where I fix it myself. Um, like the other day, you told me to replace the face with another face. I'm like, all right, I yeah, just exactly. It in. Yeah. So like, uh, it, like if if one of your artists is making mistakes then I think it's important to give them notes to mm -hmm. like, even if it's small, just, just like give them a note. If it's small and you can fix it yourself, fix it yourself. Uh, but like tell them so they don't do it in the future. Yeah. Cause you know, it like all learning when, when I first brought rush on, like, you know, there was a, there was a whole learning curve and I had to show rush what I liked and how to, how to do things. But now because I gave him those notes, he knows how to, how to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, ooh, who was your inspiration for animation? Oh, I lost the question. Uh, who was your inspiration for animation? Anime. Anime? <laughs> anime. <laughs> anime was? Well, yeah, I, I definitely liked watching cartoons growing up. Um, I've, I've mentioned this before, but Domix was a big inspiration for me. Uh, I, I started out with comics at first. I wanted to be a cartoonist. Uh, and make these these comics. Um, and I remember just as I was drawing these comics, I used to watch a lot of YouTube. And I remember thinking like, I could do that. I could I could make YouTube videos. And when I first started out, I didn't know what I was doing. Mm. Um, so you're welcome for giving making this PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> oh, oh, thanks, wow. <laughs> um, uh, this is a favorite video. Where do you answer that one? Uh, What's it like working with a team on animations? How do you find people to work on said team? That's a good question. I, I find people through Twitter or recommendations, honestly. Yeah, and when I, when I do find people, I don't just bring them on and be like, here's all the backgrounds I need to, I need to do. I give them a test first. I, I like the Apple give test. them, oh, that, that, that was an was a old test. Uh, <laughs> when, I, when I first brought people on, I would ask them to color uh, my character like holding an apple because I wanted to see how they would color the bubble person and I wanted to see how they would like color something else that wasn't that didn't have a color palette plus like an apple um, but now like if I'm bringing on a background artist I'm like give them a sketch of a background and I go like all right so this is a background I give them a description of the background I tell them I, I show them like here's some other backgrounds that have been done before so this is the style that I'm going for and then I'm like go and be free and I usually I usually give like tests to like five people at a time and then uh, then people get back to me and then I go that one you're I like that background the most and then I hire that person and then and that, that's it. <laughs> when I first so, are you try to get me to do backgrounds like no that's not a wise idea I hate I yeah. suck about oh, that's actually that's true that's true when I first started once again I didn't know what I was doing when I first started you have to figure out like who like your artists that you're hiring like what are their strengths and like how do you use that yeah. you know like i wouldn't hire an animator to do backgrounds exclusively because yeah. they're you know their talents are better suited for more frame by frame stuff yeah. but if i so when you're when you're looking for people you want to you want to define like what the position is you know like here's a background artist or an asset artist so there's like there's what how many how many positions are there uh there's like story artists storyboarders yeah, storyboarders animators. um just animators that that's that's everything for me um but then there's there's also like in between framers there's key framers 
cleanup artists. There's like a lot. Let J- the Jaden team has like cleanup artists, um, keyframers. Yeah. 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 Um, or, or compositors too. That's another thing. So if like you, you get all the assets made and then a compositor will just put it together. Or like mess like with, has mess been with or the like... lighting. Yeah. Mess with the lighting and uh, to just make the final image look good. Yeah. Um, why did you choose to do animation on YouTube brush? Because um, I want fame and glory and make funny, <laughs> make funny cartoons. <laughs> See, I wanted I wanted uh, just all the money and all the fame, so that's, that's why I I spend seven hours on a background. <laughs> <laughs> I chose the wrong path. I, I should have done that. I should have been a or something, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I, the reason I made YouTube videos is because I always liked creating things. Ever since I was a kid, I would make these little stick figure comics, and I just I don't know. I guess I had that that drive to like, oh, I want to make something and post it on the internet. And it was very fortunate that I was able to make that my career and I'm able to do that for a living. So uh, thank you everyone who's watching this and enjoying my videos. Um, I, yeah, I guess the main, it's just like, I wanted to entertain people and make something. Yeah. Did, there's, there's not really like a deep answer to it. <laughs> Also, like a thing I did, I was uh, not a lot of people near my house are like artists and stuff, and I wanted to branch out in my community and like meet other artists. So that was like a good idea to like post stuff on the internet and get like minded people to hang out with, right? Oops. Uh, what would you say? <laughs> <laughs> I said it's another thing I joined YouTube was to meet like minded people, like other animators and artists. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like. That's a, that's a, this whole time we've been talking about like story time animations and like writing scripts and everything, but you don't necessarily need to even do that. You can like make animations from like a, like a let's play audio. You can make animations of, of characters and a, a story that you have, have created. So that's you, don't need, yeah, you don't need to make animations of like talking about like, <laughs> like your annoying teachers or whatever. Um, you can like once once again. There's no rules. You just drawing's fun. So <laughs> do what you want. Yeah. Um, um, now that the animation community has grown significantly, do you think it is possible to still make it as a successful YouTube animator? I believe so. What do you think? Depends. Like depends. Depends. Like there's some people that are following the same formula. Um, the the game people got teams now. It's hard to stand out. Like post as often you have to have like a different personality or like basically or fun you have to be really funny you don't have to be that's the greatest what, artist but yeah that's what i was saying with the things to remember is to be unique like yeah. think about like the, the, the what you said about like just following the formula you don't want to just be another clone of yeah. someone else um like my boy arrow uh, he's working with like 3d and 2d mm-hmm. at the same time he does these crazy like 3d stuff and backgrounds he has animated mm-hmm. yeah yeah so do you think it's harder now than it was like four years ago? Yes. Back okay. then it was like a whole thing. It's like a new thing. Animation is coming back up on YouTube. It's crazy. It's exciting and new. And now it's like, all right, mm-hmm. we, people are established. Some small creators might get big here and there, but uh, it's like very, it's a little bit harder. You don't see much new people blowing up as they used to. Mm-hmm. I think but if they, they really like to do it, then you should do it. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. And it's, it's hard for me to say if it's gotten easier or harder because I'm, <laughs> I'm, I started in like 26 or 2014. So I've, you know, I've, I, I don't know what it's like to start out right now, but uh, I, I think, I think it's still doable. You know, I don't think it's impossible. I think oh, yeah. as long as you're entertaining, um, that, that people will watch your videos, people will share them and, you know, people will enjoy them. Uh, I will say it does take a long time for that to happen. You know, like, uh, when I first started making comics, it took me a hundred comics to get a hundred followers. That's how, that's why I tell people. And so I've seen people like, oh, James, why aren't I blowing up? And I'm like, you have two videos. So why would, <laughs> like, why would people like, I don't know. It's, it's, it, it is a, like a lot of time that you have to put in before you even start to see like numbers growing. So, so it's like a snowball. Once you start getting traction, it starts to build up mm-hmm. faster and faster. Yeah, and then first thousand is the hardest. Yeah, the, the, the first bit is probably, yeah, it's the hardest. Um, it, uh, a good piece of advice would be to like find people in the community that, you know, that are very similar to you that are doing what you're doing and like reach out to them, collab with them, do like promotions and stuff. So 
yeah, there's, there's ways to market yourself. hundred percent, hundred percent. Uh, what, uh, let's, let's do this last question. It says, what does, <laughs> this is a very open-ended question. What does the animation community mean to you? I love them. Like <laughs> to me, it's just my friends, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like what does the animation community mean to me? To me, it's just like my friends, it's people on Twitter that I like their art, um, entertaining videos. Uh, if one of my friends uploads a video, I go like, oh, so-and-so just uploaded and I watch it. Um, that's a very- 1.25 speed, yep. No, I don't watch animations at, I, I watch no. it at, I for like, for other people's, for like other videos, like tutorials, this oh, is a, this is actually like a, a good life hack. Like uh, watch videos at like a higher, higher playback speed. So that way you just can save time. Yeah. Like I still watch Minecraft Let's Plays and I watch that at like 1.5 or 1.75 speed. Cause yeah. I'm just like, all right, I, let, let's, I've, I've busy schedule. I need to get through this. Yeah, you got me into that. Hey. <laughs> Um, you know, the animation community i just they're just great people i just love hanging out with them like minded people uh, really yeah and i think we're all very we're trying to support each other you know what i mean like we're we understand how much time and, and effort goes into these animations so i don't think there's any like competitiveness between us we, no. we all want to see each other grow on the same boat like we'll sit in discord calls just to talk or watch movie night to listen to music while we work like it's like lonely to sit in your room all day so it's like nice to talk oh yeah people. yeah it is <laughs> like like what i said the, to go outside you need to you need to have human interaction with people and so uh making friends on youtube and just talking to them while you work is something that i like doing yeah it's good times all right well thank you all for Hopefully you all learned something and thank you for joining me, Rush. No problem. Uh, I'm, told, I'm told to say that uh, we're going to continue this discussion uh, on the VidCon Discord server. Uh, and there's, yeah, there's a slide that's up right now. Um, and thank you all for watching. Uh, be sure to check out the VidCon Discord. Uh, be sure to check out Rushlight Invader right here on YouTube. He's a very awesome guy. Oh, thank you, animations sir. for me. And... <laughs> and as always, <gasps> wear your seatbelt. <laughs> <laughs> um, posting a video tomorrow, so be on the lookout for that.